Hey guys, what's up? My name is Brody, and welcome back to Seven Days to Die. It is the morning of day seven. We spent night six at the Horde base. We spent the previous episode upgrading most of this to cobblestone. Uh, we tested it out and we had a few willing test subjects last night. We had a couple of zombies and a couple of wolves. The base withstood pretty well. We were able to sort of like kill them with out any real issues the only real problem i had is when i was fighting a wolf here as he was attacking the base a hole appeared in the ground now i'm pretty sure i can fill this in with clay soil and in regards to the long-term plan for the base it's not really going to pose much of an issue because i intend to have a purpose-built floor eventually with a hatch which leads down to an underground bunker. There's the morning of day seven chimes. But like I was saying, I intend to have a purpose-built floor and then I also intend to build that floor out a couple of blocks around the perimeter of the base anyway. So long-term plans, it's not a big deal. However, for day seven, I won't have enough time to do that. So that could be a bit of an issue. Now, we have some clay soil on us right now. We have 135. So I think... Is it topsoil? Or is it dirt? I think it might be dirt. I think if we craft one piece of dirt... That we can potentially... Yeah, there we go. Fill that in. Awesome. So we've had the campfire going as well. That's been crafting out water and food and we've got a couple more pieces of meat from the wolves that we killed last night that we've been cooking up just to keep our hunger topped off but i do want to make a run to trader gens today sell the duplicate tools that we have the wiring tools the paint brushes etc and see if she's got any canned food and any xp boosting snacks i can't remember what they're called some buff snacks uh from the vending machine but we'll see. Other things that I'd like to do today is I'd like to try and get some resources so that I can get all the rest of the wooden, reinforced wood, should I say, parts of the base up to cobblestone and repair the bits like this part here that was damaged slightly when we had some zombies and some wolves visitors during the evening. I think that's it. I think that is the, the plan. For today now i do want to go back to the home base as well because i think we have the parts to craft not only one forge but two forges so we could potentially start the morning of day eight with them crafting out some forged iron so that we could eventually progress then into the iron age for the second week between day 8 and day 14. I did check out the game settings and we have got 24 Blood Moon Zombies. Uh, I'm going to stop and talk whilst we're grabbing some wood. Uh, we do have 24 Blood Moon Zombies. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether that's 24 in total or waves of 24 Zombies. Uh, we're going to figure that out tonight. Before we start the Blood Moon, I'm going to if I remember, to pop open the options to see how many zombies that I've killed. And then we'll check again after they've uh, finished attacking. And we'll do some quick maths and see how many that there was in that way. If it turns out that the base is actually withstanding the 24 zombies quite easily, then for the day 14 horde, for the next Blood Moon horde, I will upgrade that. Or update the settings there to the maximum which is 32 zombies i think or is it 64 i'm not sure whatever the next step up is whether it be 32 or whatnot uh, i will upgrade it to that and then we'll test it on day 14 and if it's still the same then we'll push it to its maximum i'm not sure whether the maximum is 32 or 64 um I'll put an info card in in the editing so that you guys can know and correct my dumbass uh, as you're watching this. But we need to collect some wood, so 
I preempted this with the two skill points that I had from the previous evening. I put one of those into Mother Load, which increases the number of resources that we collect when we're harvesting them, like we are doing right now. And then the other skill point that I put, I put into Pain Tolerance because I figured with that little cheeky one hit that they keep getting in on me, if I've got this tough level one, uh, it reduces the HP loss by 5%, which isn't a great deal, but getting stunned less 20% is a big deal because I've noticed in the previous episodes that I was getting stunned quite a lot. So, oh, we don't have any stone. Are you, are you joking? Awesome. Right, I just need to run around and find a piece of stone so that I can... There we go. A stone so that I can upgrade my stone axe. Let's let's go get some stone before we then carry on grabbing some more wood, shall we? Uh, but as I was saying, the cheeky punch that they get in on me when I'm fighting, because it is quite close quarters with the, the knife. Hey, chicken. Don't run. Don't go. Oh, hey. Hey, hey, hey. These chickens. Oh, they definitely make you work for those 10 pieces of meat. I uh, can't even remember what I was saying now. But yeah, it is quite close quarters when you're fighting with a knife, be it the hunting knife or the bone knife. So they do ca catch that cheeky punch, that cheeky one hit that usually gets me infected. Uh, but I'm minimising the damage, hopefully, on that cheeky one punch because of having that pain tolerance skill now. So we'll see. That's the method behind my thinking anyway. But we're gonna grab a load of stone. Uh, ideally, I'd like over a thousand stone and uh, I keep pressing the wrong buttons. I'd like over a thousand stone and a thousand wood so that we could uh, craft the cobblestone and get the base completely cobblestone before the day seven horde starts this evening. So we're gonna crack on with that and I'll bring you back once we've got all of those resources. So, you know, standing on the top of this rock, uh, I've climbed on top of the big boulder as I've been mining it, and it's made me realise that I probably could have been doing this throughout the night time, because I'm quite high up, and I don't think the zombies or the wolves could have got me, uh, and even in their running state. So, there's a life lesson. There's a lesson that I could have, could have learned. I could have been harvesting throughout the night and not wasting uh, burning daylight, as they say. But whilst I have been mining away and chipping away at this massive boulder, I have been hearing some of the new update sounds from Alpha 19.4. Uh, I have updated the game to the latest version. It was released a couple of days ago, I think. It did give me a lot of problems, though. I, I had to record the intro to this about five or six times because... It just kept freezing the game. I ended up having to uninstall it and then reinstall the game to get it to work. So, fingers crossed, if you are hearing this, nothing's gone wrong and everything is okay. Still with the recording and uh, with the save file. But I have been hearing, like I said, the new sounds. Some swells and some, some drones in the background. Uh, it sounds kind of eerie, really atmospheric. Uh, they've either always been there or I've never noticed them, or they're new, and they're adding a little bit extra to the game, which is really, really nice. Uh, I will put my hand on my heart and say that I have not read the patch notes. Uh, I've not seen what was released in Alpha 19.4, but I did hear someone else mention that some sounds were being added, but I could be wrong. But we're going to grab this last pointy... A uh, piece of rock and then we're going to go grab some more wood and then we'll go back to our home base and we'll see if we have the potential to craft a forge or a couple of forges and then we'll stock up on everything that we're going to need for the evening uh, for the blood horde moon and see what we need to sell to trade a gen and then we can crack on with potentially finishing the base before 10 o'clock. 
Okay, we do have a couple of seeds, some pine cones, and a single little acorn uh, from the trees that we've chopped down. So, as the infamous Glock 9 would say, we'll sustain some life by replanting the trees. Uh, I don't have a cool graphic like he has, and that's his thing, not mine. But just so you know, little tip of the hat there, Glock 9, sustaining life. We've replanted all of our trees. Block nine. We who are about to die salute you. Okay, enough waffling on. Let's get back to the home base. See if we can craft some forges. See what resources that we have to take with us to the board base. See what we've got for sale. And then we'll crack on with day seven. Oh, hey. Oh, careful. You're all dressed up with nowhere to go, darling. I apologize. Right. Almost here. Almost home. I keep forgetting about that hatch and running straight into it. I can just imagine that I'm a clumsy person in real life. I can just imagine that in real life I would open that door and I would stack it over the hatch without opening it and I'd end up like head place panting the floor around here somewhere. Anywho, <laughs> let's see what we have. So forge crafting wise, I know we need stone, which we've got a lot of. I know we need clay, which we've got some of. I think we need leather, which we also have some of. The last ingredient, I believe. Oh, we've got some more leather there is iron pipes which we have here i think that's it all maybe duct tape duct tape is the thing we are missing and we need some glue and some cloth fragments to make another piece so duct tape we'll craft all three of those because then that will give us an excessive amount of duct tape. Because I think for two forges, I will need six duct tape. And I now have eight. So let's see if we have everything we need. Yes, we do. Oh, we're one clay short of two. We have a shovel. We have a shovel. Fear not, my friends. Fear not. We have the ability... To grab one more clay by doing that. <laughs> well, we actually grabbed four, so that's fine. And we were completely reckless by leaving the doors open. But now we should be able to craft two forges. That's going to be a good time. That's going to give us a good start as of next week. So we'll put the duct tape back. We'll put the leather back. I'm not sure I want to keep the leather with the food or whether I want to keep it. I'm going to keep it with the food. It's an animal product. So we'll keep it with the other animal products, such as the animal fat, the raw meat and the bones, etc. Uh, we need a bone or a couple of bones so that we can repair our knife throughout the evening or our bone knife, should I say. We can put the pipes back. Now, I know we've got a lot of anvils. We've got four, but technically we would need an anvil per forge. So that's two taken care of already or two spoken for already. So if we have any more forges, it might be worth keeping hold of these two anvils as well. So for sale wise, we have a paintbrush. We have a couple of wiring tools. We want to keep the spare wrench or a workbench. If I remember rightly, that is part of the crafting. We need a repair tool to repair our hunting knife. Our blunderbuss is okay for now. We may use quite a lot of these mods, but I think we've got two of the motor large tools. Uh, motor tool large tank mod, should I say. And we also have... No, I think that's it. I thought we had two of another mod as well, but we don't. Apparently, I was thinking of the steel tool parts and the 
metal chain mod being the same thing. Okay. I think that's everything for sale. So that's a use item. Oh, well, there's our, one of our forges. That's nice. Anything else we'll need? Potentially iron arrows. We'll need the blunderbuss ammo. Oh, we could sell the spare blunderbuss. We're going to smelt that down to brass. The two brass radiators there. Uh, we don't have anything that could use anything like that. Okay, I think we're good out of that chest. I'm trying to look at my toolbar and my inventory to see if there's anything that we'll need. I think we are good for the stuff that's there. We could potentially take some plant fiber so that we could make another bed for the horde base, but we can collect those on the way. That's not a massive problem at all. There's our two forges. I'm excited about those. And here in our food chest, we need our arrows because we've got the iron arrows and we'll take our stone arrows as well. We'll take a splint with us as well. We've got some herbal antibiotics. We've got some sewing kits. We'll take our feathers so that we can craft more arrows whilst we are down there. We'll split the stack of aloe and we'll take the aloe, some aloe with us as well. We're okay for food down there. We're okay for drink down there. We don't need any of the extras and stuff down there. We've got animal fat down there. I think that's it, boys. I think that is all we need. I'm gonna move the cloth fragments into their correct chest. I think we're okay. So we don't have to collect them. I think we're okay. I think that is everything that we need right now. If we forget anything, I, I'm sure we can figure it out as we go. I'm thinking our forges can go here. Eventually we'll take this lamp off and all that sort of stuff, but... There we go. We have forges. We might as well put two of our anvils in there now. Just so that we can take advantage of their 50% crafting speed boost for each of the forges. Uh, we need to now find bellows and crucibles. Uh, I don't expect us to be finding crucibles anytime soon. But that's good. We can now progress next week into the Iron Age. Excellent. How do you take your cooking pot out of? How do you take your cooking pot out of your campfire? Or is it trapped in there forever? Hmm. If you do know the answer to that, let me know in the comment section below because that's got me puzzled and I've, I've yet to Google <laughs> the answer. So now we can make our way to Trader Gens sell all the bits and pieces that we have, buy whatever food we can, buy cans and sweets and buffs from the vending machine if we can also buy those as well. And then we'll make it back to the base so that we can finish our upgrades, make any kind of changes that we need to, and then see what time we have before grabbing maybe some food, what to eat, stocking ourselves up, and getting ready to deal with our first, our first Blood Horde Moon. Blood Moon Horde. Our Day 7 Horde. To deal with lots of zombies in a big red sky situation. Cool. Right. <laughs> now that we've clear, clarified that, let's get to Trader Gems. Hey, Edgar. How you doing, buddy? Don't mind me, I'm just going to put some... Well, if I can hit you. Put some arrows into your luscious man titties. I should really be aiming for his head, but... Oh, 
Oh! That was nice. Oh, that was nice. Oh, thank you for that, mate. That really made me smile. Okay, let's... Oh, let's spend that skill point. What can we spend that skill point on? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. We could technically spend it on iron gut, leaky gut, which uh, your stomach isn't the perfect. Your stomach health isn't perfect, but it is better than average wastelanders. Reduced food and water loss from physical exertion by 5%. Hold your breath for 84 seconds, and the chance of dysentery is reduced by 1%. Plus from consumables, that's 10% longer. So, the reduced food and water loss, like 5%, that's, that doesn't seem like it's like a, a, a massive thing. But then that stacks with further skill points invested. I do like the buffs from consumables, like coffee and the sweets and food last 10% longer, that's 20% longer, 30%, 40%, 50%. So that's one method of thinking about investing into, um, what's it called, iron gut, leaky gut, something like that. I'll see you jumping around over here, lady. Let me come and help you out. You watch, she'll get a cheeky hit on me now and I'll get infected right before the blood moon. Anyway, we are at Trader Gens now, or Trader Joel's, but it's Trader Gen, and we've got our Casino Dukes with us. All that's empty, so let's have a look and see what consumables. I am so glad to see your face. I get oh. lonely sitting by myself all day. Oh, well, I can imagine. All right, it's good to see you too, Jen. I hope you're okay. May I see your inventory, please? Okay, so we're looking for consumables. So, so it's four bytes. Damage, damage mitigation by 50%. Okay. Well, let's sell what we need to sell first of all, which is these things that I stacked on the bottom of the inventory. And that puts us just over a thousand casino dudes. Yeah, Thanks that was everything. Wait, Stay safe out there. Sorry, I uh, I got. I've got a bit of a problem. The Duke is blocking all shipments until that job is done. I the Duke. Really wish you could oh yeah, he's the dude that left me naked in the uh, in the wilderness at the beginning. Okay, so steroids. Grandpa's learning elixir. Golden rod tea, concrete mix. Doesn't seem to be anything. Yucca juice, can of sham. Okay, so let's buy the yucca juices. Let's buy the can of sham. She's got a chemistry station. We don't have enough for that, but that's good to know that she has one. Don't think there's anything else, guys. Potatoes, eggs, not really that bothered about. Painkillers and bandages. Painkillers could be worth getting. First aid bandage could be worth getting. Anything in the secret stash? Oh, miner's helmet, that'd be amazing. Compound bow would also... Oh, it's only a level one. Beer recipe. Wasteland treasures. Volume three. So many zombies, so many bullets. Here's a trick I learned about harvesting more lead and brass from sinks and plumbing. Okay, cool. Uh, acid is extremely rare and powerful crafting agent. I figured out this tip to sometimes harvest a little from cars and medical equipment. Adds a chance to harvest acid from cars, medical equipment, and acid barrels. Okay, that's cool. Shotgun Messiah. Shotgun slugs are like a huge bullet that can travel much further than buckshot. You craft shotgun slugs. Again, don't have the funds for that, but it would be would be worth actually buying at some point. Thank okay. you so much. Hey, come again. 
I will, I will. I will see you probably tomorrow, hopefully. So what have we got? 5.33. So... Oh, wow. A can of Sham's half price in the vending machine compared to what she gave us. And the yucca juice as well. Uh, large beef rations times two. Oh, now I'm concerned. Do we get two? Or do we get a coffee? Or do we get a yucca smoothie? Stamina regen 15%. Cold resist plus 30. Water 78. Health and food as well. So that counts as everything. Okay, I'm going to go with the, the yucca smoothie. Okay, so I think that is enough in regards to food and like bonuses, buffs, buffs from consumables, I think they technically call it, uh, for this evening. And then if we should, if we drink, eat both of the beef rations, that should then put us at 100% food. Because we were just below half, and 15 times 4 is 60. Quick maths. Is that right? Maybe. So hopefully that will push our... Oh, we could do with drinking as well. That will push our food up to 100% so that we are in a better stead for the Day 7 Horde. It is 15.44... We need to craft some cobblestone. We need to craft some iron, uh, wooden bars. And I think that's it. I think that is it. But we'll see. Let's get back to the horde base and see where we stand. Okay, guys. So we're back at the base. We're going to put our food and buff drinks, etc. And our medical supplies. Into the chest, just so that we can kind of take stock of what we currently have. Uh, the bones we can put in there. You can see no dukes can go in there as well for the time being. So we've got our stone, we've got our wood. We need our clay. We need our cobbles, cobblestones, and oh, we also we already had some plant fibers here, so that's fine. Okay, so my thinking now, guys, is that we need to craft a load of cobblestone so that we can upgrade the fortified wood parts, and then we also need to craft a load of. Wooden bars, so that we have enough to finish the perimeter around the top. And then I think we are good to go. Did we pick up our hammer? I don't remember. I thought we did. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't. Okay, that's fine. We can do the upgrading with the axe. So let's get ourselves crafting a load of cobblestone. How many can we craft? 955. Okay, let's just craft 500. I think that will be enough. Did you guys just hear that? Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> okay, now I'm scared. Now I'm... I'm scared, but I'm excited. You know that moment when you stood in a queue for a roller coaster and you're quietly shitting your pants, but you're also quite excited about what's going to happen? That's how I feel right now. And my cobblestone can't craft fast enough. I keep running out as I'm going. So, <laughs> go figure. <laughs>
Now, I've just got this last one to do. I'm not worried so much about this internal roof segment, but what I do need to do is... Oh, you need to chill with that. That's going to make me poo myself a little bit. So I need to get these because they're out of the line of sight. So these last few poles are the only little bits that are in attacking range which need to be upgraded. So I need to quickly go around and do these. Then we're going to craft a load of wooden bars so that we can then do the uprights to go along the edge of the entire sort of like, I'm going to call it the gantry. Is it the gantry? Is that a good word for it? Where we can look down and shoot zombies in their noggin should we uh, need to. And we're going to have excess cobblestone, which is going to be useful because if any damage is taken throughout the course of the evening, we can use that excess cobblestone to make any repairs uh, as the zombies are attacking us during the course of tonight. I need to figure out a way of speeding up my crafting time or at least being more efficient with my crafting time because that whole waiting around whilst things were popping into my inventory huh, was really fucking annoying. <laughs> and... It's also pushed into, oh, I'm sorry, the Thor, mighty Thor pounding his anvil. Um, yeah, that's put the boy waiting to do that as we're upgrading. It's now pushed it to sort of like 10 past 7, 19, 10. And we've still got a minute's worth of cobblestone to craft. So we might not even get into getting these pieces on throughout the evening or for the evening I don't know I'm starting to get a little bit apprehensive now can they jump would they be able to stack on top of each other and jump up here I doubt it but I also don't know let's craft some bars some wood bars as well we'll craft I don't know 30 of those And then we also need to craft a load of arrows as well. How many arrows can we play? Why not that thunder? 194 arrows as well. Okay, so... I'm going to let my crafting queue, because that's a good six or seven minutes worth of crafting, uh, finish. Try and get as many bars on the top here as we can. And then get ourselves ready for... That <laughs> inevitable horde of zombies that's going to come this evening. And I'll bring you back at the start of the horde night. So probably just before 10 o'clock. Maybe. Maybe 9 o'clock. I don't know. I'll see how nervous I am. <laughs> okay, so it's 21.40. And we managed to clear the crafting queue. We've got a few arrows left. And I also decided that I was going to put a solid block in the corner because I'm going to build up another pillar and then maybe attach these with some other types or maybe just even build a pillar all the way down to the ground so that it's an extra support. I don't know. I just, I couldn't get the bars to meet up on the corners and I didn't like it. So therefore we now have a solid block there. But it sounds like we have an early visitor. It's Lois. Hey, Lois. How are you? And then we have an Edgar. But before we kill Lois, what we will do... Right, we are at enemy kills 99 and game stage 13 for this Horde Knight. So we'll see where we are at after the fact. Oh my god, there's so many. I really hope this base holds up. I really do hope the base... Oh. Right, I need to increase my stamina. And then... I think if you stab them all, it will put a... Oh, they can reach me. It will put a bleed effect on them all. So they will all take damage over time. Oh, that stamina runs out really quickly, doesn't it? 
maybe I need to invest more in... I forget which skill it is. Maybe... Cardio? Or would that only be running? I don't know. Or oh, I'm all flustered. Oh. What are you doing, Kenny? I don't know if his name's actually Kenny, just what no one calls him Kenny, so another another homage. Oh, I don't like how many there are. And also apparently I don't know how to reload a blunderbuss, but see you later, Edgar. See you later, whatever your name is. Let's reload. We've got a Kenny and we've got two hoodies over here. We'll take out the hoodie. We missed Kenny. Okay, cool. Let's do some more stabbing while we've got some stamina. Easy, Kenny. Take it easy, bud. Stab you. Stab you. Stab you. See, look. See how old denim shirt was on top of the hoodie? We'll give him more proper names eventually. But denim shirt... He was standing on top of hoodie. That's why I was thinking about the bars. Hopefully. Um. The, the, the base is holding up. Like, I'm um, just taking a minute to repair everything. I don't feel overly that threatened. I genuinely thought this was going to be a bit worse than it is. Huh. Maybe I was just overthinking it a little bit. Let's do some more stabbing. We keep taking a little hit still, but hopefully that pain tolerance uh, is being a bit efficient and helping us out. See you later, mate. do with a nice AOE weapon. Something where you could sort of like attack four or five zombies at once. And it is a little bit of a pain that they attack multiple sides. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way that we can do that will filter them all round one side. This boomstick's coming in handy though. Maybe I should invest some points into the shotgun skill. Because I know there are a variety of shotguns in the game. The blunderbuss being the first of. But it might be handy just for Horde Knights to have... You know, a stealth build for the rest of the time. With the guns, pistols, and... Uh, bows and arrows, but then come Horde Knight, get the boomstick out and just really lay into them. Oh, we've got a big mama. Hello, big mama. We've got eight blunderbuss shots left. All right, let's use them. We have them, so let's use them. I think that's the first loot bag that's been dropped. Good night, big mama. Okay, maybe, maybe not good night. Maybe just... Maybe that one's good night. Well, hopefully. There you go, Lois. Nice present for you. We haven't had any dogs. Oh, I know we've had wolves attack the base. But we haven't had... It was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. Ah! Uh! Ah, uh, the base. The base has failed. The base has failed. The base has failed. Oh, shit in hell. The base failed. Oh, my goodness. Right. We need the splint as well. Or do we? Oh, it's just a sprain, apparently. Damn it. Oh, the base failed. 
I wasn't paying attention to that one side. I was not paying attention to that one side. Dang it. Now I'm cold as well, so. <laughs> well, that sucks. Okay. Get out of my base. Ah, we, we made a mistake. We made a terrible mistake. Let's get back on the roof. Oh, my leg is broken. Now we need the splint. Oh. Can we use the aloe cream on anything? Oh. oh, we messed up, guys. We messed up real bad. Oh, we're out of blundy buses. We messed up real bad, guys. Oh my goodness. How are we going to get them out of our base? But this is it. This is this is what the Horde Knight was supposed to be about. I wasn't sure whether the base was going to be successful or not. Now we know <laughs> it's not. But we do have contingencies. Like I say, we can come up to the gantry and shoot down on them, turn them into uh, undead porcupines. Right. We just need them all to come back outside now. There you go, big mama. Let's take you down. Take down Hoodie. We need to think of a name for Hoodie. Something like real Asbo-like. If you've got any name suggestions for the hoodie, uh, leave them in the comment section below. I think you're called Arlene. I think that is your actual official name. Oh, come on, Arlene. Stop moving. You're not dead. You're not dead. Well, you, they're a zombie, so you technically are dead, but... Or not dead, dead. Oh, I've got iron arrows, haven't I? I completely forgot about those. I've got 20 iron arrows. They've got to do more damage than stone ones, right? If if I shoot them. There we go. There's Arlene done. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Right, cool. Shut that for now. Come on then, watch your face. Oh, don't need it. We ain't got a name for him either. We'll take Nursey. See if we can. All right. We'll just take what we can get, shall we? Oh, I'm really gutted about that. I'm really gutted that that base. There was just. Oh, I shot my torch out. That's interesting. How many are left? Yeah, I'm really gutted that that one that one block let us down. That was probably me being careless and not keeping an eye on the statuses of the blocks, letting them wail away for too long. Um. How am I going to get these guys out of my base? Where's the side that's got a ladder? Uh, this side. Oh, that hurt my leg. Uh. Oh. <laughs> what an idiot move. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot move. And we didn't put a bed down at the Horde base. 
And we did not put a bed down at the board base. What an idiot move. What an idiot move. Right, let's try and get back to the base without all the jabronis killing us again. Oh, looks like they've all vacated the area. Oh, I feel like such an idiot, guys. I feel like such an idiot. Like, the rest of the base, is, like, there's a couple of bits on 7, 800. Oh, maybe 300 there. So, yeah, we have a couple of weeks. But that one, the one that disappeared that I've chucked the wooden block into, the wooden wedge into. Damn it. I should have been more mindful. I should have been more mindful about my repairs throughout the Horde Knight. That sucks. That sucks. It's like, if this was a permadeath series, that would be it. That would be game over now. Damn it. Damn, damn, damn. Okay. We'll wait till morning. And then we'll go around and do our repairs. Hopefully the, the few zombies that were here that have now disappeared won't be coming back. I'm not entirely sure of the mechanic of what happens when you die on a horde night. Whether they all, they all vanish or whether they try and go to your new location. I'm not sure. But we're here by ourselves. It's 2.41. We've got a load of repairs to do in the morning, but I'm not going to do that until the daytime. I'm going to wait out the rest of the Horde night up here, see what happens. And then I'll bring you guys back in the morning. Oh, I'm so gutted. So, so gutted. And there is the morning chimes, guys. Oh, I'm so, I'm still so gutted. I'm still genuinely disappointed with... My rookie mistake. I shouldn't have jumped down. I shouldn't have jumped down when my health was so low. But I was trying to figure out a way to get them out of base. Oh, it's a bit of an idiot move. But let's take a look at the damage. Other than the block that was missing. Obviously they completely destroyed this block. I put this wooden wedge in as a patch. But the other blocks. So what's that? Nine points of damage, nearly all gone. That's what, 1,300 points of damage. So it does appear that they focus on one area. So some of the poles are down to 300, or well, one is. But some of them are hardly touched. Some of them haven't been touched at all. Hardly anything on this side. Oh, on the pole side of things, but on the wedge side of things, I think... 1,100, 300, I think, and 400, 500. Again, it seems to vary by block by block. No pole damage, some outer damage. I did notice that there's some floor damage as well. So, putting in that artificial floor, the co cobblestone or the wooden floor that I was thinking about, is definitely something that needs to happen before day 14 as well. Um, I need to extend these columns down as well. Yeah. But all in all, the base, I think, is a good design. Or is a substantial design, should I say. I think what let me down with the day seven horde was my own ineptitude. Maybe I got a little bit overconfident with the base, thinking it would withstand. Maybe I didn't realize that I'd have to actually spend a portion of the night doing repairs. I don't know. 
I don't know. Either way, we had a death. That now pushes the series total up to four. Like I say, I'm glad this is not a permadeath series because otherwise it'd be over. Well, it would have been over a long time ago, but it would really be over now. But we live and learn. We have another life. We have another chance to improve the base. We have another chance at a day 14 horde. I'm out of cobblestone, so let's craft some more cobblestone so we can do some more upgrades and we'll we'll chat whilst that's crafting. Let's just craft two hundred. That'll be fine. So yeah, I want to extend these columns down so that that block up there is supported and then eventually maybe build a birdcage roof to that and have that be the support for the roof. I don't know. I'll have to think about that one as well. Uh, we need to repair the ground because we need to think about what we're going to do in regards to improving the ground so that they can't dig underneath me. And I think what else? We need to think a bit more tactically. We need to think as well, like obviously, like I said, jumping off to try and get them out of the base. My thought behind it was if I jump off and they start chasing me, I'll be able to run and jump up the ladder to get them out of the base so that I could then potentially shoot them from the gantry. Not taking into account my low health, not taking into account the fact that I had a broken leg as well. That was just an idiot move on my part and I apologize. But like I said, that was our first day seven horde. Things could have gone a lot better, but things could have gone a lot worse. Like I say, I think the structure is a good basis of to what we can then build a base on. We could potentially also put some spikes around the edge to give them a bit of more damage before they actually get to the base. I don't know. I'll come up with a game plan and we can figure that out all between day 8 and day 14. Uh, but the only piece of loot that we got was the Tech Junkie Volume 6. Charge Strike. This technique gives a 25% chance for regular and 50% chance for power attacks to instantly charge stun batons. We're not going to be using stun batons, but I'm just going to read every book that we come across anyway. Just in case we decide to change our build or our playstyle. Uh, throughout the course of the series. But I'm going to go around and I'm going to make sure that everything's repaired and that the base is kind of reset, ready for us to then progress into the next week. Uh, but again, guys, I want to apologize. Sorry about the death. I hope you found it interesting, my successes and my failures with this base. Uh, we're going to progress into the next week in the next episode, uh, but I want to thank you for joining me. If you found this video entertaining in any way or you enjoyed watching it, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do want to see more within this series and other games on the channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. So with that being said, guys, I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hey guys, uh, I know that I've already been the outro, but I also wanted to say that if you do have any suggestions for the base or any flaws that you can spot that you want to point out to me that I could potentially change for next week as well that I'm unaware of, let me know that in the comment section below as well. Okay, much love. Appreciate that. Take care. Peace.